During the previous off season, Dick Monford and I had a long talk out at out at the, the field in in his office, and he said that the philosophy there was to have a group decision. That there were was a general manager, an assistant general manager that had a lot of mm -hmm. power, Bill Gavat, that uh, it was Dick Monford, and to an extent Walt Weiss. Mm -hmm. It seems like Walt Weiss. According to Dick Bodford, I think, in, according to you, has, is more involved now in the decision-making process. So, would you say it's a three-headed? Uh, I don't want to say monster, but it's a, you know <laughs> sort of mythological. Uh, if you talk about that, but do you feel like that the three of you are making the final decisions, or is there a tie vote that goes to the owner or to the general manager, or are you making the decisions and going to those two guys and saying, uh, "This is what I want to do, and yeah. I want to do it." Again, it just depends on what we're talking about. Well, it let's depends take a play. on a trade. Let's. Yeah. Do, I'll give you a specific though. Uh, a free agent pitcher that you might want to sign. Okay. Or let's a, go too low. Let's go too low. Let's Great. go too that's, low. The Mets were interested. Uh, that's where I'm going. Yeah. Right. That's where. That's yeah. that's a natural for some for something like that for a, a decision like that. And I can't speak for any other organization in the game, and I can't speak for any other organization in uh, any other sports industry. But when you have a player plus a contract. Um, of that magnitude, it, it, in my opinion, it should be there should be ownership element or ownership inclusion in that sort of decision, and there certainly is with us. I mean, that's that's appropriate. Th those types of decisions not only affect the now; they affect the future Colorado Rockies, um, and potentially for years to come. And so they should, you know, Dick and Charlie and whomever else should have, you know, not only input, but um, some sort of working knowledge and updated knowledge of of where we're at with um, you know teams that are interested or you know whatever's going on with that type of a player. So and that's not even a. I mean that, that that's that's easy stuff. I mean those are that's that basically comes back to just communication on on me and how I communicate to Walt, how I communicate to. The owners and well, just to get, for us to get a better <clears throat> understanding, let me follow up on that if I can, and I'll turn it over to you. Uh, you made a deal during, I believe, Super Bowl week that ca ca because of Super Bowl week kind of slid past people, and I thought it was really an interesting deal. You you acquired two pitchers from the Atlanta Braves, mm -hmm. and it didn't get a lot of attention. But I looked at these guys, and they both have, I think, real possibilities. And we had been crying out, "When are they going to get pitchers? When are we going to?" Mm -hmm. And you got a couple of guys from a from a from a franchise that's always been known for being able to find quality pitchers. Right. Uh, in a case like that, did you make the decision? Did you go to Walt Weiss and say? What do you think of these guys? Look at the film. Did, you, did does Dick Monford have veto power in a situation like that, or Charlie, for that matter? Uh, could you kind of walk us through how that deal worked? And I think the reason I want to do this is where people have a better understanding of how the operation is working now with a new general manager. Sure, uh, something like that. It uh, you know again, Dick and I talk on a daily basis. Walt and I talk basically daily. If it's not daily, if we've missed a 24-hour period of time, we make it up very quickly, uh, and that's been by design. And so when that when that situation rolled around, you know, it fits into one of our overall goals for the entire offseason, which has been, you know, looking at each and every way that we can possibly um, improve the pitching quality and the pitching depth in our organization. So when that came about, um, you know, that was the result in this particular situation of a long process with the Atlanta Braves, that we covered many players and many names um, back and forth a lot, and it took days and, and even weeks. So yeah, you know, if, if, you're, if, you're, if I'm communicating well to Walt and I'm communicating well with Dick Monfort and whoever else is involved, then yeah, they're gonna be, they should be up to date on, on those types of interactions. Uh, so, uh, you know, in terms of veto power, again, it, in this situation, it, it you know, he, Dick's the owner. I mean, theoretically, he can have veto over whatever he wants, but he doesn't run. He doesn't do his job in that fashion, in that manner. He doesn't. He doesn't run the organization like that. It, it, when you talk about collaboration, it is much more collaborative, and and we need collaboration from a number of different people so that we aren't missing certain things. And and, and when we have opportunities to do something and when we have opportunities to not do something and pass on something that that those processes are well thought out.